You know, sometimes I feel like I'm losing my mind, Dr. Cool. I'm on this lonely road thinking about what the future of transportation could be. Everyone's arguing over hydrogen cars versus EVs. And here I am wondering, why not a self-charging EV? Alex, you're ambitious, I'll give you that. But a self-charging EV? Sounds like you're dreaming of perpetual motion, and as much as I respect your passion, you know that violates the laws of physics. It's not about perpetual motion, Dr. Cool. It's about smart energy harvesting. Think about it. The technology we need already exists. Kinetic energy recovery systems, solar panels, wind turbines, and high-efficiency alternators. Why can't we combine them into a car that powers itself as it drives? Because it's not that simple. Energy harvesting systems like alternators or regenerative braking need input. The more you try to harvest, the more strain you put on the system. You'll end up draining the battery faster than you recharge it. That's why it's about balance. You don't rely on just one energy source. Let's start with high efficiency alternators. They could be fitted on secondary shafts or wheel hubs. Not your standard alternators, but ones optimized for low drag and maximum output. Interesting, but where's the energy to power these alternators coming from? If it's the drivetrain, that's more load on the motor, which drains the battery. Not if we integrate smart energy management systems. The alternators wouldn't be running all the time. They'd kick in strategically when the car is coasting downhill or braking. Speaking of braking, we could enhance regenerative braking to recover more energy, even during subtle deceleration. Regen braking is a solid idea, but it's not new, Alex. Every EV already has it, and it's still not enough to sustain the car indefinitely. That's why we add solar panels into the mix. Flexible, high-efficiency ones. Cover the roof, hood, even parts of the body. Panels like perovskite cells can generate energy even in low light. They'd provide a constant trickle charge. A trickle, Alex. That's the key word. Solar panels might give you enough juice to power the lights or some auxiliary systems, but they won't move a car at highway speeds. And that's where wind turbines come in. Lightweight compact turbines could be installed in the grill or undercarriage. As the car moves, it generates airflow that spins the turbines, producing additional electricity. Wind turbines on a car? You're introducing drag. Every bit of energy you gain would be offset by the resistance they create. It's robbing Peter to pay Paul. Not necessarily. The turbines could be optimized for aerodynamics and placed strategically to minimize drag. Besides, they're just one part of the equation. The idea is to combine multiple energy sources, kinetic, solar, wind, to create a system that works together. Even if you manage to harvest energy from all those sources, you'd need a battery capable of handling the constant charge cycles without degrading. Agreed. That's why we use solid state or sodium ion batteries. They're more durable, charge faster, and have higher energy density than traditional lithium ion batteries. Pair that with AI-powered energy management, and you've got a system that dynamically allocates power where it's needed most. Okay, I'll admit you've thought this through, but let's say you build a prototype. How do you overcome the economic hurdles? Developing and scaling something like this would cost a fortune. Sure, but think about the payoff. No more range anxiety, no need for charging stations, no dependence on fossil fuels or the grid. The environmental and societal benefits far outweigh the upfront costs. True, but what about public perception? People are already skeptical of EVs, let alone a concept as radical as a self-charging car. That's why we start small. Build a prototype using off-the-shelf components, test it, refine it, and prove it works. Once people see a self-charging EV in action, skepticism will turn into curiosity, and eventually, acceptance. And if it doesn't work? Then we learn from it and try again. Failure isn't the end. It's just another step towards success. Look, Dr. Cool, the world's current EV model is flawed. Charging stations are costly to build and rely on power grids that often run on fossil fuels. It's counterproductive to the whole idea of zero carbon emissions. That's a fair point, but there's still a long way to go before this concept becomes reality. The 
only way to make progress is to try. Imagine a world where you don't need to stop to charge your car or rely on energy from a grid. A world where mobility is truly sustainable and independent. That's the future I'm fighting for. I'll admit it's a compelling vision, but let me play devil's advocate for a second. If this technology is so feasible, why haven't companies like Tesla or Toyota pursued it? Because it disrupts the status quo. Think about it. Charging networks are a huge business. If you make cars that don't need charging stations, you render an entire industry obsolete. It's like the water-powered car or other breakthrough ideas that were silenced because they threatened powerful interests. So you think there's a conspiracy holding this back? Not just a conspiracy, an economic reality. Companies tied to fossil fuels and even power grids stand to lose billions if self-charging EVs become mainstream. That kind of money buys influence. Okay, Alex, let's say you're right. What's your next step? Build what I can with the technology available today. Test it in real-world conditions. Find out what works, refine the concept, and prove it's possible. Once we have a working prototype, it'll be impossible to ignore. You've got ambition, Alex, and while I'm still skeptical, I can't deny your determination. Maybe, just maybe, you're onto something. The future of mobility isn't outdated EVs with limited range or hydrogen cars with dangerous infrastructure. It's self-charging EVs, vehicles that free us from the grid, fossil fuels, and environmental harm. One prototype at a time, Dr. Cool. That's how we change the world. Well, Alex, you've got a lot of work ahead of you, but who knows? Maybe your vision will redefine the future. It's not just a vision, Dr. Cool. It's a mission. And I'm just getting started. Oh, <laughs> my